Whew. Okay. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about analysis paralysis. Analysis paralysis, which is basically getting stuck in a loop and unable to make decisions. You know, have you, I'm sure it has happened to you before where you want to make a decision about something. It could be something simple. Either you want to go to dinner or you want to pick a restaurant or you want to go to a movie and you're trying to decide whatever movie to watch. And you're just talking to the loop. Okay, I'm going to do that. Oh, I will do that. Oh, I will do that. Oh, you know, you cannot make a decision. That, ladies and gentlemen, is analysis paralysis. So there are a few reasons why we are unable to make decisions. One of them is fear of failure. You know, because you keep, when you start thinking about the worst case scenario, what could go wrong, what could go bad with this decision. Woo. That is a train, a high speed rail that is going by. But anyway, let's get back to it. Fear of failure. When you start thinking about what could go wrong, with this decision, what could go bad with this decision? That can cause some sort of a loop and indecision. And that is one of the one, number one reasons why people get involved with, you know, where, where, that's one of the reasons why people are indecisive. Another reason is perfectionism. You know, when you really want to be perfect, right? There's this saying, making the perfect the enemy of the good. You want to be so perfect that you refuse to make a decision. You refuse to press play. You know, you want your YouTube video to be so perfect, you refuse to record. You want it to be perfect. You want to have the perfect background, the perfect camera. You refuse to make a decision. That is analysis paralysis, ladies and gentlemen. The third reason why people get sucked up into that indecision analysis paralysis mode is information overload information overload in this day today there is so much stuff on the internet you know you have a critical a crucial decision to make you go on the internet you start reading stuff or you listening to your mom your brother your friend everybody start telling you things Everyone starts saying things like everybody starts talking about, oh, this is what you should do. You should think about it this way. You should think about it that way. Information overload, ladies and gentlemen, is another reason why people get stuck in the analysis paralysis loop, y'all. Let me give y'all a few examples, okay? Let me give you a few examples. How many times I know people that this has happened to? where they're trying to decide to go on a vacation. They've been talking about it for the past six months, for the past eight months. They've been talking about it, I'm gonna book my flight, I'm gonna book my hotel, I'm gonna book this, I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna do all of this. And time passes by. Procrastination, they procrastinate until it is too late. Maybe when they first, maybe the first time they started looking, it was only $500. And then they waited three, four months. I don't know why. You're waiting for additional information. You're looking for a reason why you don't do it. And then three months later, it's $1,500. It's three times the original amount. And then you don't do it. That is a real life example, right? I'm sure in your lives, whether you it has happened to you before. It may not be vacation in your case. It could be something else. It could be going to a movie. It could be restaurant. You're trying to go out on a date. And you just talk about it and talk about it. Should I go to, do I want to eat Chinese food? Do I want to eat Italian food? Do I want pasta? Do I want seafood? And you dilly dally, dilly dally. You do not make any decision. I mean, come on. We all know. We all know people that this has happened to. We know. Professionally, and I've seen this happen before professionally, where maybe there may be a project at work. There may be a project at work. You need to build something. Maybe you need to build a new system. And there is so much data, so much information, so much stuff that they keep feeding. 
and it never gets started. Six months later, we're still talking about it. We're still doing meetings. You know, you still get in that email in your calendar. You get it, you know, let's talk about this project. Nobody decided like, hey, actually let us take concrete steps. Okay, we've talked enough. Let us come up with a plan. What do we do tomorrow that is actionable, that we can actually now say we've taken one step. Let's crawl. You don't have to run. Let us crawl and then take one step and then take the next step and then take the next step. But we all get stuck in this loop of indecision, of indecisiveness. And that is one of the things that is stopping all of us today. Analysis paralysis. We are too smart for our own good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are too smart for our own good. We are just sitting there not taking steps. We are just talking, analyzing. I mean, there is a point where it just, it's not analyzing anymore. It's just talking. It's fear. Like, ah, I don't want to do this. Procrastination. You're not doing anything with yourself. That is one of the things that is stopping most of us today. Analysis, paralysis, indecision, indecisiveness. It is weakness to not be able to just take simple steps towards a goal. It is weakness. Now, I'm gonna talk about a few ways to overcome analysis paralysis, right? I'm gonna talk about a few ways. One is to set deadlines. When you find yourself in that loop of indecisiveness, set a deadline, put it on your calendar, and say, you know what? In 48 hours, by 7 p.m., two days from now, I am going to make a decision. If you haven't made a decision at that time, you make the decision immediately at that time. You want to buy that ticket? Buy it at that time. Stop waiting. Stop waiting. So that's one. Two, Find an accountability partner. Find someone in your life. It could be your mother. It could be your friend. Find that friend that is always going to be truthful with you, that will tell you the truth, that wouldn't lie to you. And tell that person to call you, to hold you accountable, to make sure that you make that decision, to hold you accountable. Find that accountability partner to make sure, to hold your feet to the fire to help you. I know, sometimes when you're in the midst of it, it is tough. And quite frankly, it is tough. It is tough for many people to hold other people, to hold their friends, their family members accountable, right? Because it can lead to friction. But find that person in your life who doesn't care, who's gonna tell it as it is and keep it moving. Who's gonna tell you like you're slacking? You're slacking, who's gonna tell you and doesn't care about how you feel about it at that time. And the person said it because that person cares about you. Find that person in your life who is gonna hold you accountable, okay? Find him or her, okay? The third reason, remember I talked about information overload earlier. It's limit the information that you take. Don't go reading and, you know, and researching other stuff. Don't do that. It is a useless exercise. You, you already have enough information. Set a deadline and say, you know what? I'm going to spend an hour just researching, two hours max. Once you've done that, that's it. You make a decision. Limit the information overload. Stop listening to, you know, to, to John, to Susie, to Karen, to Betty. Stop listening to everyone. Everyone has an opinion. Let them use that opinion to make decisions in their own lives. Stop listening to everyone, okay? Stop listening. Stop the information overload. Stop it. Also, another way is to make a list. Make a pros and cons list. You know, as you perhaps research and you're taking in information, you can start writing things down and say, okay, this is a pro, this is a con. Make that list and then at the end, decide. Go ahead. It's not going to be the end of the world. What it, most people don't understand is when you make a decision, it's not interminable. You can always change your mind. 
you can always change your mind. Like a decision doesn't mean that's it. Like you stuck to it. No, you can always change your mind. But make the decision already, damn it. Make that decision already. And finally, trust your intuition. All right? Trust your gut feeling. Sometimes your gut feeling is just right. You want to go on this vacation, just go. You're trying to decide between Italy and Spain. And you know your feelings telling you, I think I'm going to like Spain. I'm going to like Spain. Do it. Just, just pick Spain and keep it moving. If you're indecisive, like, you know, if you start thinking, oh, maybe I should have done, do Italy next year. Do Spain this year, do Italy next year. There's, so you don't miss out on anything. You don't feel like you don't miss out. I feel like, okay, just do it. Come on, do it. So I'm telling you this, not because, you know, I'm trying to say I'm perfect or anything like that. Like, I've had instances in my life as well where I've been indecisive, but I've found that it is useless, right? Like it doesn't help me. Indecisiveness actually doesn't really help me do anything. It doesn't help you either. You don't, you, you, you actually miss out on experiences. You miss out on experiences. You miss out on opportunities because you're there dilly dallying. It makes you weak. It kind of like lowers your mentality. And sometimes in this world, you want to like maintain a certain kind of mentality so that you can advance and progress in life and with certain things that you want to do. So make a decision quickly with information that you have and keep it moving. All right. That's all I got in this video. Okay. On to the next one. Bye bye.